Welcome to Paper Discussions with Grandmaster and today we are going to look at 2019 January Chemistry Edexcel IAS Unit 1 paper. Let's look at the question 1. Hydroxide ion OH- has a total of 9 protons. How many neutrons and electrons are there in this ion? To do this, you will have to look into the periodic table of elements provided and spot hydrogen and oxygen and pick the values of atomic number and mass number. If you tabulate them, you will end up with this. Using this data, you can calculate the number of electrons in oxygen and hydrogen and number of neutrons on oxygen and hydrogen. Then you can calculate the total number of protons in OH- easily, which is 8, and the total number of electrons. When calculating total number of electrons, you have to take care because you have to consider the negative charge on OH- ion. So it will end up as total electrons is 10. So the answer would be B. Without going into this much of calculations, you can easily get the answer if you read the problem and the given answers carefully. Let's see again. The hydroxide ion has a total of nine protons. That means nine positive charges. And it says the ion is OH minus having one minus charge. So the total number of electrons on this ion should be one plus number of protons. So it gives you 10. The only answer which gives a 10 number of electrons here is B. So the answer is going to be B. Without any calculation, you can get the answer in one second. Let's see the second question. A sample of silicon contains following isotopes. Silicon 28, silicon 29, and silicon 30. And percentage abundances are given in this table. So the question is, what is the relative atomic mass of silicon to one decimal place in this sample? You can easily apply the values to this formula and get the answer like this. Even without applying the values or going into the formula, you can get the answer. See the percentage abundances of these isotopes. Silicon 29 and silicon 30 makes less than 50% of this sample. That means, obviously, the relative atomic mass should be in between 28 and 29. You have two answers with such values, A and B. A could not be the correct answer because it is similar to 28. Since the, there is an abundance of other isotopes, we can take the value 28. So the answer should be 28.2. Question three. Which is the electronic configuration of a carbon atom in its ground state? To do this, you will have to revise the Aukwa principle and Kuhn's rule. Aukwa principle states that electrons will occupy the orbitals having lower energy before occupying the higher energy orbitals. And it provides the order of energy also. So, According to Aukwa principle, we have to reject the A and B answers because in A, before filling 1s and 2s orbitals completely, it has started filling 2p. In B, before filling 2s, it has started filling 2p. So AB is rejected. We are left with C and D. To find the answer, we will have to look at Kuhn's rule. According to Kuhn's rule, 
every orbital in a given subshell is singly occupied by electrons before a second electron is filled with an orbital in an orbital look at answer c in answer c you can see that one 2p orbital is double occupied before occupying before singly occupy, occupying all the 2p orbitals so we can reject answer c so the answer would be d question number 4 what is the maximum number of electrons in the 3p subshell and in the third quantum shell of an atom hope you can remember these values the quantum shell 1 is having only one subshell s and number of orbitals in s subshell is 1 the number of electrons occupied is going to be 2 quantum shell 2 number of subshells 2 s and p number of orbitals 1 and 3 maximum numbers of electrons can be occupied would be 2 and 6 respectively and total of 8 now let's look at the third quantum shell which is having three subshells s p and d the number of orbitals in s p and d are respectively 1 3 and 5 and it fills up 2 6 and 10 electrons the total of electrons occupied by third quantum shell is therefore 18 so we'll look at the answers a is wrong because in all three p on all, all the p subshells there is a maximum of 6 electrons can be occupied so you can reject a and b answers now we are left with c and d which says maximum number of electrons in 3p as 6 and maximum number of electrons in third quantum shell as 8 and 18 when it says third quantum shell it should include all the electrons that can be occupied maximally by s p and d orbitals in answer c the d orbital has been forgotten so the correct answer would be d the fifth question the first six ionization energies of an element in kilojoules per mole are shown in these values now the question is which group of the periodic table includes this element let's see what is the clue you can get from these values we know if you take the adjacent ionization energy values of a single atom when a sing uh, when there is a complete energy level to be broken it will require a large amount of energy so when it changes from one quantum level to another you will see a big leap of energy now we'll look at these values if you observe these values carefully you will see the fourth value is having a big leap compared to the third value that means before breaking a complete quantum shell it is ionizing it is emitting three electrons that means this atom should be from the group 3 of periodic table of elements 